الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علیہ و صحبہ وسلم اما بر عبت اللہ A question was asked, Assalamu alaikum, Akhi Kareem. I am a 27-year-old married man with two children. I want to take a year out to go to Egypt with the family to learn the deen and strengthen our Arabic. However, I'm getting doubts and fearing poverty as I currently hold a good job in the UK and don't want to, and don't want to lose it. Any advice or encouragement you can give me would be appreciated. The city I'm in Ev, uh, from everyone puts doubts in your head and always say don't go you will lose everything first and foremost we have to know that talib al-ilm is talib al-jannah that seeking knowledge is seeking paradise and as the salaf used to say al-ilm lam yati bi rahat al-jazid that knowledge does not come with uh, comfort in the body meaning it takes struggle it takes struggle and it takes sacrifice And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَقَّلُوا أَنْ كُنْتُ مُؤْمِنِينَ And rely and put your trust in Allah if you are believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of the ayat, وَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَقَّلُوا أَنْ كُنْتُ مُؤْمِنِينَ And upon Allah put your trust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a command that you need to put your trust in Allah azza wa jal. In kuntum mu'minin, if you're truly believers. So that's a, a, a reminder for us and a command for us from Allah Azza wa Jal. And we know that al-amr yufid al-wujub, that when there's a command in the kitab wa sunnah, the asl, the origin of that command is that it is, shows that it's a, an, uh, an obligation upon us. So it's an obligation. We already know that tawakkul is a type of ibadah, it's a type of worship. As... Uh, The imams of the sunnah like Imam Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned about ibadah. Al-ibadatu ism jami' li kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min af'al wa aqwal al-zahir wa batin. That ibadah is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from statements and actions which are open and hidden. Meaning hidden inside uh, that are in the heart. Actions of the arts, uh, heart. So these are all considered ibadah. And from those actions of the heart is tawakkul. Is that you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can measure your tawakkul. No one uh, can say, oh, you only made so much trust in Allah. They can make judgments based upon your actions. But however, the ultimate putting trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's between you and Allah azza wa jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your heart. So... With that being, keeping that in mind, tawakkul is a type of ibadah. It pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you, rem, uh, that you uh, rely on him, tabarak wa ta'ala. And as the scholars also mention about uh, the concept of tawakkul, uh, they define tawakkul as a tawakkul uh, huwa itimad ala Allah wa fi'la asbab, that it is relying on Allah, putting all of your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, And make it actions. So that means, for example, in your situation, you want to do talib al-ilm. That means, make istikhara. Ask the people around you, people that you trust and that you respect. And then put your trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have, if you have the means and so forth, then go for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, with your particular situation, what I would say is... Going away for a year, yeah, you'll, you'll strengthen. If you know some Arabic, you'll strengthen your Arabic. You can do a lot productively in a year if you're very serious uh, and Allah grants you that tawfiq. But most people in a year, that's not uh, much. And, you know, that's just, you know, improving something or getting a taste of going out and seeking a little bit of knowledge or learning a little bit of Arabic. If you're in a proper program, maybe you can learn Uh, you can do some good Arabic studies and get a strong foundation. But as far as Arabic and learning the deen in a year, no. Uh, you're just going to get a, a little taste and it's going to be an introduction. Or if you already have something, it's going to, uh, you can increase and you can do a lot. You know, it depends upon the person. And so I would say that if you think, you, as you said, you have a good, uh, you have good employment If there's a way that you can postpone it until you have a better opportunity, then you can do that as well. But if not, I would say that you should prepare for more than a year and go and make it worth your time. And since you have a good job and you probably have, 
you're probably an educated person, you can probably get another one. So that's another thing to consider. But those are decisions you will have to make on your own with regards to what your goals are and what you're trying to achieve. I would say don't fear poverty, but be wise. So it's really a middle path. It's a middle path that, yes, uh, some people you may advise to go for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go. Because you, you have other opportunities and go just seek knowledge. But if you're going and you're going for a limited period of time and it's going to cost you uh, your your job and you're not going to be able to take a sabbatical, for example, you know, some some time off or whatever, and then get your job back and it's difficult to get a job for you and this and that and the other, then those are things to consider. Those are things to consider. So, again, everyone's situation is different. I would say you don't lose when you seek knowledge, but if you do, you need to make it really worth your time. You should be not think about uh, a year if you're going to give up a scholarship and you're going to give up your uh, a good job that you have. You need to consider making it a, a prolonging it. So maybe you should save more money on this good job, secure more credentials, and prepare so that way you could go away for a few years with your family and seek knowledge or whatever the whatever your goals are and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.